Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Year Round Tree, Lizzie and I's Christmas podcast, bonus show, whatever we're calling it at the moment. <laughs> we, uh, we're we here, as always, by the fireplace, mm-hmm. ready to talk about some Christmas entertainment. I'm here sipping on this Yuletide Moon Red Holiday Cocktail, mm. care of codrecrunch.com. It's so... uh, It's a gluten-free website. So in that palette, you know? I like it. I like the... I don't know that I will, but I like the way it looks. Mm -hmm. And this particular thing we're talking about has got me excited. So it's a Merlot bourbon, maple syrup, cherries, clementine juice, and cinnamon. It just... That sounds beautiful. It smells amazing. It looks like blood, and that's the reason I'm drinking it. (laughs) That would be the reason, wouldn't it? Should just put like a... And that's because our our episode today is about uh, it's American Dad, Season 6, Episode 8, For Whom the Sleigh Bell Tolls, which is one of my favorite American Dad episodes because, you know... Nothing like a Christmas massacre. Yeah, Steve killing Santa Claus is pretty awesome. <laughs> that's uh, that's how Nikki rolls, so... That is how I roll. I have to ask, though, Liz, is there something about Stan Smith you find particularly exciting? Why do you ask? Because, I mean... Normally, you come in here with a wonderful Christmas sweater, and strangely, today, you're, you're wearing a bikini made out of, like, the popcorn and cranberries that we normally string around the tree. Well, you know, I thought I'd start this off with a bang, as it were, so... All right, wait, are we having sex? Are we doing that instead of recording? No, 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 that's later. That's later on. Oh. I was I was trying to be with the double entendres, and... I was, was getting my hopes up. Yeah. You've dashed them. Well, I don't know if they should be dashed at this point. Just dash away, dash away, dash away all. Well, at the very least, I have to wait through this podcast recording to get laid. So, I mean, there's that. It's entirely possible. I said at the very least. Could be longer. Who knows? Well, in the meantime, I am uh, I'm warming up with my rosemary gin gimlet. That does sound pretty good if you're into rosemary. That sounds festive. We had some beautiful sprigs of rosemary out in the garden uh, this this summer and I've, I've saved them and dried them. They're one of the few herbs that actually preserves all of its like the color and the texture and everything and that wonderful smell. So, so is it gin gimlet? It's gin and uh, some lime juice, some pomegranate ARLs, and uh, so that you got the, the red and the green. Okay. And uh, you just make yourself a little simple simple syrup and, uh, you know, have it in there with the gin. It's basically a gin and tom- tonic with, you know, a little little bit of an herbal flavor. You do like your G&T, so it's only natural that would, uh, yeah. that would tickle your fancy. Yeah, exactly. So, as we said earlier, today's holiday special we are talking about is... For whom the sleigh bells toll, which is a great reference. It was an ACDC reference, right? Or is that a Metallica? That's Metallica. I feel like there might be a literary reference originally for, for that, whom but. The bell tolls. But yeah, sure, we'll say them. <laughs> oh, man, ACDC should have recorded that one. Uh, anyways, this is one of my favorite episodes of American Dad, which says a lot because I love American Dad. Yeah. My. I don't know. I, I think this is my favorite, but then it, maybe it's my second favorite. It, it, it jockeys for position dependent on the day. Yeah. With the Rapture episodes. And like in both cases, it's somewhat of a heartwarming, normally heartwarming sort of subject matter. And then you're just amazed at how far they actually go with it. Yeah. It's <laughs> just like there's there's the limits of good taste. There's the limits of offense. And they're just way, way, way off in left field somewhere. And then there's what I expect. That's what tickles my fancy. Yeah. So like some of the references in this are just completely insane. We should mention the Rapture episode as like a, a spoof on the Left Behind series. I mean, I, I feel like you can't talk about Rapture in any uh, any pop culture without bringing that in somehow. It was just so huge culturally, for better or worse, really. So the episode is opens up with uh, Stan getting all pissed at Haley about uh, Jeff and how he's a piece of shit. Good thing <laughs> you can do. A good way to start a Christmas episode. You got to have a personality flaw to overcome. Sure. And the reason is because Jeff's asking Santa for a golden compass polar bear helmet. Which is just so... Haley, why did your adult boyfriend still believe in Santa Claus? Right. And plus he's asking for a movie from that crappy ass, or for a a thing from that crappy ass movie. Well, honey, they have to set up the growth. Right. You know, we've established that people believe something that's not real. 
We're about to find out who. So the whole thing is, it reminds me of the Vandals who I believe wrote the song A Gun for Christmas. Because mm-hmm. that's what Steve wants, to, or that's what Stan wants to get Steve. This is going to be the Christmas he gives him a uh, gives him an assault rifle. Which is, you know. Great. Also references the whole uh, Christmas story, right? A little bit. So he wants the Red Rider BB gun, even though this is obviously taking it farther, much, much farther. I never think about that because, like, the dad gives it to him and, like, goes out to shoot with him. It's not like he's trying to hide anything. Yeah. The thing that's funny about this, though, is that, like, mom says, oh, I forbid you to do give him a gun for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so Stan says, all right, happy Wednesday, son. <laughs> And then gives him the gun anyways. <laughs> Just so. And so then they take it out to, to give it a test, and, and they end up testing it on a snowman. Well, no, the, he he shoots his eye out first. Oh, okay. And they have to go get something at the store. Okay. So they're in the freaking mall parking lot shooting at a snowman. <laughs> Which is just so many more levels of ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Well, actually, we're actually kind of getting ahead of ourselves in this one, aren't we? We haven't killed anybody this in this one. You have the A story and the B story, so. Yeah. Sorry. So the B story is actually my favorite part of this. This is one of my favorite scenes in an American Dad episode ever. And it's Roger going to the liquor store and uh, telling the guy who runs the liquor store, I am what you might call an advanced drinker. And, like, so the guy's like, oh, well, uh, we have some, you know, the hard liquor over there. He's like, I'm telling you I can't get drunk. And he's like, oh, he's like, I'm sorry, sir. I had to make sure. And then, like, it, it, it all the whole thing be, opens up this, like, expose where he, he teaches him about where the strongest liquor known to man can be found. Like the legend of this moonshiner. Yes, the forearm, or is it six-armed, four-armed, moonshining cyclops demon in, up in the mountains. <laughs> Yeah. And meanwhile, in the middle of the story, like this other guy keeps like asking questions and like derailing it like you would happen in an actual store. So like you have like the the very like oh, fire and brimstone shit. Yeah. Juxtaposed against the, hey, do you have watch batteries? I know it's a weird <laughs> question. <laughs> Which Roger eventually just smacks the shit out of the dude, like <laughs> d- jumps through the air and like it's a slow-mo backhand. And, uh, it's funny though. Yeah. But Roger freaking out like, I'm what you would call a bit of an advanced drinker. It's just such a silly fucking way to explain, start that conversation. Pretty much. So eventually they get to the actual firing of the gun. And what's hilarious is that uh, Stan is teaching him how to use the uh, clip. And he describes it like basically how he would describe sex. Mm -hmm. You just keep jamming it in until it goes. Eventually, it'll get where it's supposed to be. It's just so awkward. Yeah, it's exactly how you imagine Stan has sex. Don't care. Don't care if it fits right. Just make it fit. If <laughs> <laughs> you, you feel like you you completely missed all of this. No, I mean I remember that part. I don't know. Maybe maybe from a chick's point of view, it's not as funny. But <laughs> well, honey, it's funny because it's awful. Oh, okay. Very 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 well. Carry like, on. That's the point in the whole show. Is it's awful. <laughs> Stan is a horrible horrible character. There is that. Yeah. He's not endearing. He just sucks. Yeah, fair enough. And so, like, he slams it in there. And, like, next thing you know, she's, hey, shoot that snowman. Blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden you see a fucking Santa Claus fall over dead on the other side. Yep. And like, oh, shit. And so Stan's like, oh, gotta hide a body. He's like, what, what is he? he makes a joke about your mom. Yeah, your mom might kill you. Or wait, she might get you to do it to me. Kill her, eh? <laughs> but seriously, you, you killed somebody. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, it's so the opposite of what, you know, actual responsible gun owners would do <laughs> on every level. So it's just... Because like I said, honey, Stan is not a good person. As, as you find out in the show, nobody in this family are good people. Well, yeah, it is surprising how uh, easily they just slide into the, uh, the role that they end up playing. <laughs> and so, so Roger... Runs off to the mountains and finds Bert Bert. Yeah. Call me Bob Todd. Todd Willis fine too. Call me, call me Mr. Williams. I won't know what to do. Ladies call me Bert Bert. <laughs> yes. And it's just like this classic hillbilly character. Like just exactly what you expect a moonshiner to look like. Pretty much. But he recognizes Roger as an alien in a wig. And I love that. Because <laughs> it's like he's not even, not even confused for a second. Well, that's funny. It's like I think they get into the, you can see things as they as they actually are. It's like, well, you're not a you're not a forearm cyclops. And he hands him some of the moonshine. And he goes, Oh, you know. And all of a sudden, he's like, Wah! Oh my god! So Roger goes, I need to know how to. I need some of this alcohol. And he, and he's like, I will do anything. 
And this joke is so disgusting. But this is like, he's like, no, no need to prostrate yourself before me. I, I cannot give you my elixir, but I can teach you how to make it. He's like, oh, thank God. He's like, you had me in the palm of your hand there. A few seconds later, it went the other way around. It's so awkward. It was Roger saying he was going to suck his dick. Yes, but that is Roger. If, if you're not catching the euphemism, folks. Yeah, it was just fucking hilarious. It is absolutely Roger. And so then they, they, they the, the training session is... Uh, Basically, they, they do it as a game of Donkey Kong where Bert Bert is tossing fucking uh, barrels down the mountain and, and <laughs> Roger's jumping over them. Yep, pretty much. Eventually, he climbs to the top of the game. And oh, by the way, and for the, uh, the audio, like it's not like they have like the actual game. Like, they have someone doing the like, voice of the game audio. Right. <laughs> so dumb. And so Roger gets to the top and he kisses the, kisses, kisses the princess who... In the mo- all of a sudden, it fades back to reality where the princess is a raccoon. And he's like, "You yes, the raccoon. You're a real moonshiner now." And all of a sudden, Roger's got the bull hut and with the fucking the buck teeth. Yeah, it's just it's so over the top. It's the best. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And we 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 haven't even gotten to like the meat of what's actually going on in the story. So all of a sudden, they do a uh, I still know what you did last summer. Only it's Santa. Yes. They all get scrolls to the house. Right. Like, hey, did any of you guys get a weird scroll? What's all this about? They're all very, um, you know, Christmas puns, but horrifying Christmas puns. Yeah. And so eventually they all go and dig up Santa in the woods. Who they, of course, buried in the... I mean, and, and I mean, you know, Francine is completely, you know, appalled when she hears about it. She's like, well, I'm not going to let this ruin our Christmas, so we're going to bury him in the woods. <laughs> Just like... Okay. Well, yeah, that's what we forgot. Like, we glossed over the fact that they all went back and buried Santa in the woods as a family, minus Jeff. Yeah. Okay. And so, all of a sudden, we get, like, a cut scene to what's actually going on at the North Pole, and you've got Santa with bullet holes in him. And, like, basically it does that that Wolverine scene from the X-Men where he's in the tank, and he's got the shit connected to him, and he's, like, healing in the tank. And all of a sudden, we see Santa, like, his bullet holes disappear, and he kind of fattens up a little bit. And apparently, like, the elves are are healing him so that he can come and kill the smiths. Yep. Oh, yeah. So now that they realize Santa's real, proving Jeff right, which is funny, because that's that's its own little joke. The shithead in the beginning gets to be the guy who's right. Right. And the, I like the joke about from Francine about... Sweet. So that that vibrator I got from Christmas last year was really from Santa? <laughs> well, you know, because it's just all of those slightly awkward gifts you get now and then that someone just says are from Santa if they were actually aware. What, like what? I don't know. Honey, what awkward gift have I ever given you that would I be said it's from Santa? I want credit for the sexy gifts you get. I'm just saying. I'm not going to pawn it off on the fat man. That's fair. Pawn it off on this fat man. (laughs) So it's pretty funny. They uh, Eventually, they all go and hide in the hills with Roger. Right. And Bob Todd's all like, oh, yeah, you can go hang out with us. Which, why hillbillies specifically would just be like, yeah, screw Santa Claus. Like, what? (laughs) Is a little odd to me, but okay. We're rolling with it. I think he was just looked at them as being Roger's family, which makes them kin. Yeah, okay, fair enough. You know, because Roger's a moonshiner now, so he's kin. That's that's fair. That makes sense. And they all go up there, and then all of a sudden you hear, like, Christmas bells coming up and says, God damn it! And apparently Haley told Jeff that they were up there. Because, you know... I want to spend Christmas with my husband, Dad. Right. The uh, the problem is, so Jeff comes in and then he gets in a fight with uh, Stan because that's what the fuck they do. And all of a sudden he's like, Jeff, go turn your, Chris- your, your your vehicle back off. I can still hear the Christmas lights. And he's like, oh, my vehicle is off. And that's when we see it coming over, cresting, coming over the hills and the, the, the sunrise or sunset, whatever it is. <laughs> right. Santa and an army of elves on reindeer. And they're playing the friggin' Mannheim steamroller, you know. That's not what that is, Liz. What was it? It's Trans-Siberian Orchestra, I believe. Trans-Siberian Orchestra. My mistake. I apologize. Honey, Mannheim steamroller is a very different thing than Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Well, no, I know it is. I just hear, like, people talk. Well, I used to hear back when they actually had shows. People talking about this show is coming to town, you know, Mm -hmm. in both cases. So... I've always wanted to go. Yeah, I'm sure it's a good. Never end up doing it. Good enough time. So, anyways, this begins a big battle royale shootout, like between the families and yeah, and Santa and his elves. I love a uh, Santa comes down and he lights his fucking uh, cigar on Rudolph's nose. 
<laughs> it's all like, you know, they get in a few of those action movie shootout tropes. My favorite line in this is actually Francine to Steve, who she didn't want to give a gun in the beginning. And he's like, he's all like being a pussy about having to go out and defend the family from Santa. To which she goes, can it growing pains and send these toy makers to hell? <laughs> It's all so very well. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely like everybody in the family, except for except for Jeff, I guess, because he's just passive altogether. But they're all totally OK with, well, I guess we're just going to go kill smells and Santa Claus now because that's what we're doing. So Steve, he takes a, a clip and smashes it into his gun. And he's like, how's that feel, Linda? Oh, yeah. And so him and him and Stan run out and they're like behind hand, like, like a half smashed up car, like for cover and. And he goes, is it weird to have a boner right now, Dad? And he's like, it'd be weird if you didn't. <laughs> Just so <laughs> because weird. Because that's the sick fucks these people are. Pretty much. So all this is going on. There's a whole turnabout where, like, Stan tells Jeff to go go help Santa because Santa's like, Jeff, you're a good boy. You're not an evil piece of shit like the Smiths. And so he offers him an out. And, and Stan's like, yeah, why don't you go take it, you piece of shit, you... <laughs> so he does, but he he turns it into a double cross, and so he takes the the helmet from the the that movie, whatever the hell it was, Golden Compass. Ugh. Yeah, God, so we're terrible. it was so crap. And he stabs Santa in the side with the helmet, and then eventually, like as they're all dying, there you've got like the whole by explain this this whole scene. Like it, there's there's elves with their organs out everywhere. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty brutal, and they they do have like. You know, on top of like just the the gore of watching like reindeer cut in half and riddled with bullets just falling out of the sky onto people and like half of them explode for some unknown reason when they hit the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, then you've got the visual joke of like after Jeff stabs Santa, they like wrap him up with wrapping paper because like what else would, you know, people from the North Pole like treat wounds with? And Well, and so eventually they retreat into the house because they run out of ammo and and in this, you have uh, Francine and Haley are trying to trying to kill them as they're getting into the house. And so Roger gives them all like extra large candy canes. Yeah, and then and there's like, well, if we suck these to a point, we can we can stab them to death. And, and like Haley immediately sucks it to a fucking razor point, and Roger's like, Haley, I'm impressed. <laughs> and he's, and he t- I think he tries to tell Francine to give it to him. No, I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like such an awkward little joke that they don't they don't even really explain the joke, but you get it. Well, you know, aside from that, like it's also like that's a mother daughter thing and you're like, uh Right. Yeah, yeah. This is all uncomfortable as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Just so much Christmas discomfort in this episode. <laughs> And so the whole thing eventually becomes uh, a stalemate. They don't ever win. They just manage to last long enough that Santa and the elves start disappearing because they ha- they only had until Christmas morning. Right. And so then all of a sudden they disappear. And I think there's like a, isn't there like a scroll that appears out of nowhere? See you next year, Smiths. Yeah. Oh yeah. Basically that thing, which is funny when you think about it, because like, didn't Futurama have like the, the Santa comes to kill everybody on Christmas every year thing? John Goodman. Yeah. And so it's very like. Yeah, it's the Santa <laughs> robot. Why are there all these, these cartoon shows where just Santa it has a massacre every, every Christmas, but. I don't know. They're fun though. But anyway, so this, uh, the whole thing is, oh my God, that's our Christmas tradition. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, yeah, this is how the, the Smiths end up getting a Christmas tradition, which is apparently. Trying to last the night. Yeah, trying, trying not to die from Santa every year. <laughs> it's awful. <sighs> But there you go. That's really funny, though, Liz. That is the key. It is really fucking funny. So all in all, I, I've always loved this episode. It, it even has those like moments like they got their Christmas tradition, which is like a, a great Christmas episode trope, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they hit the mark, you know, and it's not my thing just because of like the gore and whatever. But like, it's certainly memorable. You know, and I'll, I'll give give it that. And I, I do, you know, I have an appreciation for American Dad on some level, so it, it works. All right. Well, folks, this has been another episode of Your Own Tree. Go and uh, check out the two seasons before this. This is our third season doing this. We've got another 10 shows we're going to be talking about this year. And uh, it's going to be fun. Thanks for coming around. 